the the conventional um, University of Chicago view of financial markets um, is called the efficient market hypothesis. It's coined by my friend and colleague, Gene Fama. And it has two components. One is that you can't beat the market. You, you can't predict the future from the past or from anything else because all information is impounded in today's price. And the second uh, component is what I call the price is right component, which is that uh, asset prices are equal to their intrinsic value, wh whatever that is, maybe the net present value of future cash flows or something like that. Just like our optimal weight is yeah, exactly. intrinsic value. Yeah, exactly, right. <laughs> so uh, I think the, the first part is not far off. Um, I say that in spite of the fact that I'm a principal in a money management firm located about 10 miles north of here in San Mateo um, that uses behavioral finance to try and beat the market. And we are moderately successful. Uh, nevertheless, I don't advise any of you to try to do it. Uh, and I do not own any individual securities. Um, I don't think I can do it. I, I think our guys can do it, but they work full time on it, and they have disciplines that we've given them, and they have access to information that you don't. Um, the, the second part of the, the hypothesis, prices are equal to intrinsic value, for a long time, financial economists lived in the comfort of thinking that that part of the theory was untestable. And there's no better feature in a theory than untestability, <laughs> right? I mean, that, that's a really comforting fact. Uh, but of course, um, everything turns out to be testable in the end. And, you need some special circumstances to find obvious violations of, of that. So let me give you a recent one. There's a, a closed-end mutual fund. Uh, I will give a 15-second definition of a closed-end mutual fund. They sell a fixed amount of money, and then the shares are traded, and you buy and sell them, and what, what that means is the shares can trade at a price different from the value of the assets they own, which is already embarrassing to efficient market zealots. But there is a closed-end mutual fund. It happens to have the ticker symbol C-U-B-A. Now, needless to say, it has never and cannot invest in Cuba, in spite of its name. It invests, it's called the Caribbean something fund, um, and it invests in things like cruise lines and companies in Mexico, and, uh, but not in Cuba. And uh, has been trading at about a 15% discount to its net asset value for several years. The day, you can see where this is going. <laughs> the day that President Obama made his announcement about uh, relaxed terms with Cuba, the CUBA fund jumped to a 70% premium, which means people were paying $170 for $100 worth of securities that they could have got for $85 a week earlier. <laughs> 